YouTube. I'm back and I'll be reviewing some new information. So this is some um, shocking information to say the least. So you guys know the timeline already. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people know about the case. Um, so in case you don't, I'm gonna go over it real quick because we got some body cam footage that I'm going to be reviewing later throughout this video. And um, basically it shows Brian Koberger and his dad they're getting pulled over after the murders were committed. So you're going to see the uh, look on his face. You're going to see um, how his dad reacts. And we're going to talk about that. Oh, and um, guys, just to give a little uh, information about myself. Um, I worked as a correctional officer. I studied criminology, studied criminal science. Um, I worked as a correctional officer in one of the worst prisons, or one of the worst, sorry, one of the worst jails in the US so um, I'm not sure if you guys can comment down below if you guys think or could guess which jail is that but it's been uh, one of the worst jails in the US for decades um, okay so that's a little bit about my background I study criminology so um, I examine a lot of criminals get in their minds and things like that so um, I look at a lot of body language and um, I dealt with I dealt with a lot of these uh, criminals uh, people from the mob, uh, people in uh, criminal organizations, gangs, uh, bloods, crips, um, just random murders and things like that. Um, so I dealt with a lot of that, talked to a lot of criminals, um, created a lot of documents and things like that. So um, that just shows, um, just giving that a little bit of credibility on my end. Um, so, okay, right here, Saturday, November 12th. Kaylee Gunn Clavis, Madison Mogan, Ethan Chapin, and Xana Carnoodle were students at the University of Idaho who lived at a nearby off campus residence in Moscow, a college town of about 25,000 people, right? They had two other roommates in the three floor, six, I think he meant third floor. Um, oh, oh, no, no, three floor, six bedroom apartment. Okay. Gunn Clavis posted a series of photos on Instagram at some point with the caption, one lucky girl to be surrounded by these people every day. All right. One of the photos shows Morgan sitting on Gun Clavis' shoulders. That's Madison. That's Kaylee. Uh, with Chapin and Colonel standing next to them. So these two were a couple. This is Kaylee. This is Madison, right? All right. Sunday, right? Morgan and Gun Clavis ordered at a late night food truck at about 1.41 in the morning. So now this is Saturday night, they went out and this is Sunday morning, that video in the food truck that you guys could see here, which is um, the video that a lot of people were reviewing at the time. And they were talking about how, I believe Jack is right here in the gray hoodie, um, that he looks suspicious. But so now we know that it's not Jack. Um, if you look at this video, it just seemed like they were just they had, I think, one issue with uh, some guy. It wasn't uh, Brian Koberger, but it was just some guy that um, they cursed at. But basically, it's just them ordering food. It, it was. Okay, it's a little bit of ad. So, uh, Chapman and Kernoodle are believed to have returned home around 1.45 a.m. and Conclavis and Mogan use the private party for a ride home at about 156. Okay, we'll see the video right here. Answer questions to when it comes to the timeline. So this new video has surfaced um, just after 1 a.m. Two of the victims at a food truck. We learned from authorities uh, that they were reportedly murdered overnight, that when officials arrived at the house, that was because of a 911 call at 11.58 a.m. for an unconscious person. They got there, the door was opened, uh, and there didn't appear to be damage inside. All of those details raised... We're not our two roommates who lived on in that mm. residence with them. We're not really getting any more answers at this time. Obviously, we're traumatic events that have happened. Mm -hmm. All right, so basically those were just uh, Maddie and Kaylee. They were at the food truck ordering food at about 1.41 a.m., right? So 1.41 a.m., they got back at around 1.56. Um, they used a private party, it says, for a ride home. So, um, so the food truck was about, let's say, like about 10, 15 minutes away from their house um, by car. So it wasn't that far home. Um, seems like a food truck that people in that town usually go to. 
uh, two two other roommates were at the home and they were not injured. They woke up the later later the next morning and summoned friends and they uh, ended up calling the police because they said that the victim had passed out. Now this is strange to me. They said passed out. Now we know the injuries were stab wounds. We know Kaylee um, got it the worst and being that you know the other two roommates uh, reported that they passed out and was not waking up it's a little bit strange you know because I would think that it would be blood around there you know being that it was deep deep stab wounds possibly a hatchet um who knows but um there was no sign of force entry or damage now this is important guys no sign of force entry or damage whenever there's no sign of force entry that didn't mean somebody was invited in somebody had the key or somebody must have left the door open all right now it's college town i'm thinking they're drunk coming home at 1 a.m we saw in the previous body cam videos how uh, a lot of students were in there at the time um sometimes without the homeowner being inside the home so um we know it was like a little bit of hectic in there you know it was like a lot of people uh, a lot of college students in there partying and sometimes you know you got a lot of students in a home that's not theirs or that they're not living in they're not going to take care of it as um the homeowners will so a lot of chaos there um so basically at that same night during that timeline um i think it was around 3 or 4 a.m that um uh, that uh the murders were happening that uh allegedly brian koberger was uh murdering um all of the four victims here now monday november 14th and then you see the 15th this is where, um, so, okay, yeah, the 14th is where the police issued a statement identifying the four homicide victims, and then the 15th is where they described the edge weapon, such as a knife, was used in the killings. No suspects were in custody. Wednesday the 16th was when uh, Police Chief Fry held a news conference, and that was the department's first in the case, and reiterated there was no suspect as well. So. This is a town where I think in the last 15 years, there's only been seven murders. Now, in 2022, there were four murders in one day. So this is like a big deal in this small town of about 25,000 people. And Friday, November 18th, they said the victims was likely asleep before they were attacked. So detectives then had conducted interviews and they started um, questioning the neighbors, the boyfriends and things like that. All right, right? So... You guys pretty much got the um, the gist of it. Um, this is the whole timeline. Um, Wednesday, this is December 7th. This is when they released the Hyundai Elantra, the white Hyundai Elantra that they were looking for, that they spotted in the body cam. And um, yeah, basically this whole entire month, um, allegedly Brian Kohlberger was on the run, right? So now today we have footage of Brian Kohlberger getting stopped after the murder so november 15th this is tuesday uh this is brian koberger actually getting stopped on the 15th of december in 2022 so he got stopped this day now this day that he got stopped right so mind you he just committed the murders right allegedly and november 15th now, Moscow police issued a statement saying it was an edge knife. This was all over the news, right, at this time. So this is what the police said. We hear you and we understand your fears, right? We determined early in the investigation that we do not believe there's an ongoing threat for community members. Evidence indicate that this was a targeted attack. Now, yes, indeed, it was a targeted attack. But from what we know now, everyone was in danger at that time. Because um, supposedly this is like, um, I believe... From my experience, this is not his first time. Is, isn't it weird, guys? I'm asking the question, right? Isn't it weird that someone first time allegedly killing um, is four students at one time? I think that's a little weird. I think he actually did something before. Um, I think they need to check in PA, Monroe County, Pennsylvania, where his family is from, where he grew up. Uh, I also think they need to check in Washington State University, and I also think they need to check in Moscow, Idaho, right? So I'm sure Kaylee wasn't the first girl that rejected him. I'm sure he got rejected by plenty of girls before that. But I really believe, I truly believe that we need to uh, check in and um, 
see if he uh, did anything in the past, maybe compare his DNA to other cases. So while the police was issuing a statement, this is the body cam that shows him and his dad getting pulled over. Uh, now I'm gonna put on the closed captions just to capture the audio. Recording. Now guys, that's the white Elantra, I believe. That's the white Elantra. Koberger is here in the driver's seat and his dad is right here in the passenger seat. Hello, how you doing? How y'all doing today? Now, guys, if you looked, let me rewind it back a bit. Um, if you look at the initial reaction on Brian Kohlberger's face when the police said, how are you doing? Um, just I'm going to pause it and I'm going to let you know uh, what that tells me. Hello? How you doing? How y'all doing? Now, his dad seems innocent. His dad seems like he don't know what happened and things like that, right? So we see here that it's a Honda. Um, we see the symbol on the steering wheel. But the interesting thing to me was Brian's body language. His eyes is completely wide open. It's just a traffic stop, but he just seems so afraid. He seemed nervous. His hands is down. He's just looking and trying to... It seems like he's trying to act normal, if that makes sense. So um, usually people like that, they just uh, have a guilty conscience on their mind. And usually if you look at their body language and their actions, you could tell that there's something that they're afraid about, if that makes sense. So based on his facial reaction, um, I could see he's like terrified uh, from just a traffic ticket, which seems very weird because um, if you're just getting a traffic ticket, Shouldn't be so um, looking so terrified, but um, this was just surveillance. Um, I believe they may have uh, had some information, so um, we'll see. Uh, I'll continue the video, but his eyes look like you know, like he just <laughs> his his eyes look like a deer in headlights. You know, like um, this is very interesting. Um, his facial reaction to just a traffic stop. Today. Good. Take a look at your driver's license real quick if I could. See, so he's right up on that van, man. He's right up on the back end of that van. Hold you over for tailgating. Is this your car? Okay. Cool. Where are you headed? Well, we come from WSU. And, uh, now, if you notice... Brian Koberger seemed disappointed that his father said we're coming from WSU. Now, his father was just being honest. His father flew over there, and they drove from WSU all the way back to Monroe County, Pennsylvania. Now, you notice Brian Koberger did not say where he was coming from. He just said we're headed, and then he just pointed straight. Now, it seems like he's not really didn't want to really tell that much information to the police, and the police just simply asked him, where he's headed, right? What's WSU? So we're, okay, I, I'm having a hard time hearing you because of the traffic. So you're coming from Washington State University? Yeah. And you're going where? Oh. Uh oh, okay. Slightly much between driving for hours. Hours, days. Hours to drive. Well, yeah. Almost a day. Okay. Wait, did you guys catch that? Look how he looked at his dad. Look at this. Interesting. Well, it's horrifying. 
He's looking at his dad like, man, you better stop talking to the police because I just committed four murders, allegedly, of course, and um, you're going to get me caught. That's how he's, that's the look that right now of what I'm getting of him looking at his dad the way he's looking at his dad. It don't seems like he, like he's trying to say too much, but his dad is just being polite, you know, and then he's not knowing about any other murders or anything like that. He's just um, letting the police officer know that, you know, we coming from Washington State University, you know, this happened and we're heading here. But it seems like Coburg is sort of like, uh, stop talking. Right, so I'll continue the video. So, so y'all work at the university there? I actually do work there. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't heard about that incident. Just yesterday, or? Now, you notice once they changed the topic and started talking about the mass shooter, and then you see Brian Kohlberger uh, start talking and, you know, start basically singing. Uh, you know, he start can't keep his lips shut. You know, he start talking about this mass shooter and trying to, to redirect the uh, conversation of um, about where he's heading and things like that. Now he's starting to just talk about a mass shooter and to sort of like deflect from having the conversation about where he's heading and things like that. So I don't know why they even mentioned something about a mass shooting. I personally haven't heard about the mass shooting, but um, this was just something that uh, I think he did to deflect the conversation from being on him and sort of just uh, keep him, I guess, out of the spotlight. Okay. Well, do me a favor and don't follow it too close, okay? Oh. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you. I believe he drove away already, but I believe they got stopped in Indiana. This was the first stop that they got stopped in Indiana by the police. Um, yeah, so that whole interaction was very weird. This, remember, this happened a day or two days after the murder. And, um, yeah, you see Koberger's eyes is very wide. It seems like he don't want to really want to talk. His dad is talking. His dad is innocent in this case, I believe. Um, but it seems like Kohlberger, if you look at the way that he's looking at his dad um, throughout this whole interaction, just seems very, um, very suspect. Um, you know, for someone being pulled over in a traffic stop, he just looked very tense, very terrified of um, possibly the cop knowing that he committed all of, all of these murders. So um, get in the comment box, guys. Let me know what you think about this video and the first stop and the timeline and all of the um actions that led up to um the murders of the four idaho victims um we do have an affidavit that recently been released so um we'll definitely be talking about that later as well um but please guys like this video um you guys been showing a lot of support and um as you guys continue to like the video um, this video gets sent out to more and more people, so please like the video, comment, and subscribe, you guys, for more. Peace.